Over the past few weeks, I ran around the city, excuse me, shoved my microphone in the faces of a bunch of random millennials and Gen Zers. Can I just have a moment of your time? And asked them what came to mind when I said the word mitochondria. Everyone responded with nearly the exact same phrase. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. The powerhouse of the cell? Powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the cell. Well, almost everyone. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of your mom. (laughs) That got me thinking. Why is the mitochondria considered the powerhouse of the cell? And why does everyone remember that particular metaphor even years after taking a biology course? Hi, my name is Jamie Harvey. And in high school, I wanted to be a scientist. Then I discovered that science is a ruthless cutthroat game and decided to be a humanities major instead. But once you fall in love with science, you can never truly lose that spark. So I decided to combine my passion for science and my journalism and sociology skills to bring you Modern Memetics, a podcast about scientific words and phrases that inhabit the public consciousness. The first thing you need to know is that the phrase, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, is technically wrong. The word mitochondria is plural, the singular being mitochondrion, which just sounds like the name of the lamest transformer. Oxidative phosphorylation. Anyway, it would be more accurate to say that the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. Mitochondria are in most eukaryotic cells, meaning cells with DNA packaged together in a nucleus, and the average animal cell has somewhere between 1,000 to 2,000 of them. But why are they considered powerhouses? Well, that's simple. Mitochondria consume the food and oxygen and produce energy. The reason why we call mitochondria as a powerhouse. That was Dr. Song Young Park. He's a specialist in mitochondrial biology and is the vascular research lab director at UNO. He says that mitochondria produce the free energy and the heat. So we can use those free energy for our body. Simplifying things quite a bit, cellular biology runs primarily on chemical energy, or energy stored in the bonds between atoms that form molecules. Macronutrients like glucose are fairly big on the molecular scale and have a lot of chemical bonds that store energy. Cells don't directly use the energy stored in glucose because macromolecules contain more energy than most cells can immediately use. It would be like strolling up to a crappy vending machine that doesn't give change and buying a can of soda with a 50. Not necessarily efficient. Hey. Enter mitochondrial respiration, a process by which mitochondria consume oxygen and macromolecules to produce lots of adenosine triphosphate, aka ATP, essentially breaking your 50 into ones that can be more easily spent. Or, well, breaking your $30 to $32 bill into ones since one molecule of glucose creates 30 to 32 molecules of ATP, but I digress. Anyway, before I got to bother a leading researcher on mitochondrial biology for my weird podcast, So this right here is a high-resolution respirometer. I got to bother brilliant doctoral candidate Liz Picus. So we can use techniques that involve Doppler ultrasound to show me around the lab. This is called near-infrared spectroscopy. I guess it's not very terribly interesting to look at when it's not on. She had certainly heard about the mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell before. If I had a dollar for every time I hear that, I'll, I'll never, man. But mitochondria aren't just the powerhouses. But like mitochondria, they, they do so much more than that. They do so much more. Mitochondria are critical to our survival in so many different ways. They are important for producing energy and maintaining cellular homeostasis and several different functions in the body. One of those functions is providing energy for the dilation and constriction of blood vessels. Is our blood vessel can be bigger and smaller. Which helps regulate blood flow. If we have bad mitochondria in our blood vessels, our blood vessels cannot be well dilated or well constricted. For some, this leads to a buildup of plaque in the bloodstream and eventually will have atherosclerosis in your blood vessels. And in some cases, peripheral artery disease. So with PAD, that's when we have the blockages in the legs blocking blood flow, getting to the muscles. So these patients experience pain when they're walking. Researchers in Park's lab are looking for ways to try to improve mitochondrial function and help those with peripheral artery disease. Their work is important because when mitochondria don't function properly, we have imbalances in energy production. The mitochondria can produce what are called free radicals, which can be damaging aging related disorders or diseases like cardiovascular diseases, Alzheimer's, can all stem back to mitochondrial dysfunction in some sort of way. Anyway, that's all very interesting, but I got sidetracked. I need to ask the important question. Why does everyone remember the phrase, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell? I think that because of because of their teachers, everybody maybe heard that uh, mitochondria are the power rise which produce energy. So they think, oh yeah, mitochondria is important. So everyone knows that the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell because they create energy, or at least convert energy into a usable form. But why the word powerhouse? Why not power plant or power generator? 
all sources point to one journal article that cemented the phrase powerhouse of the cell in the public consciousness. In 1957, cellular biologist Philip Siekiewicz published an article in Scientific American called Powerhouse of the Cell. And that name stuck. Powerhouse of the cell? Powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the cell. Although I can't say for certain why the phrase survived for so long, I would guess that it's because it's simple, quippy, and accurately describes the purpose of the mitochondria. However, Siegfried's phrasing implies that he didn't coin the term. It appears that mitochondria supply the cell with most of its energy. They have been called the powerhouse of the cell. I kept searching around for the originator of powerhouse of the cell, but most articles and papers I found reference the phrase without citation, as if it was general knowledge. The mitochondrion has aptly been termed the powerhouse of the cell. But then, after hours of database searching, I found it. The first mention of the phrase, powerhouse of the cell, on record, stated declaratively. Thus, the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell, for they can oxidize nearly all of the organic foodstuff the organism ingests. It can be found in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology, Volume 22, Issue 5, from May 1954, in an article authored by Dr. Robert de Greshmer and researcher Edith Gould. Although I can't say for certain, I would argue that Robert and Edith were probably the first scientists to use the phrase, and from there it caught on within the microbiology community before being cemented as the go-to phrase for describing mitochondria by Sikovich's article in the widely read and accessible journal Scientific American. The phrase then became a cultural meme, used in textbooks and by teachers, and then by the next generation of teachers taught by those teachers, and then finally by the random strangers I harassed on the street. Thank you, that's all I needed. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Modern Mimatics. I've been your host. But wait a minute. Everyone doesn't just remember the exact phrasing of their biology textbooks years later. There has to be more to the story than just that. Somebody posted a picture of a science textbook and then talked about their science professor doing it and then everyone just kept quoting it because the American school system is just that broken. That was Juliet Clark, roller derby player, Transformers aficionado, and more relevant to this story, an expert on the social media platform Tumblr. She's been on the site since at least 2011. Too long, unfortunately. And she's followed most of the site's major memes and trends. I mean, I'm there every day. <laughs> she says the phrase, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, is a joke that pokes fun at how the American school system can teach rote facts, but doesn't prepare students for life. And then eventually it became the only thing anyone remembered from seventh grade biology other than Bill Nye, the science guy. I guess it makes it even more poignant that most people remember the phrase wrong. Mitochondria isn't the powerhouse of the cell. They are the powerhouses. From its origin on Tumblr in 2014, the meme spread across the internet as a tongue-in-cheek critique of the inanity of the American school system. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And unlike other internet memes that fade away over time as they become less relevant, Damn, Daniel! Every year, a new generation of students learns about the mitochondria in class. Powerhouse of the cell. Keeping the joke alive. Fueled by the frustration of middle and high schoolers, the phrase is now firmly established in our cultural consciousness. So I wasn't taught how to look after my health, but mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. No. The American school system may be infuriating, but science is fun and cool, and I'm not letting my podcast end on a sour note. Mitochondria are awesome. So awesome, they have their own genetic code stored internally in a ring of DNA. They probably even used to be their own independent organisms. The leading theory on the origin of the mitochondria is called the endosymbiotic hypothesis, which asserts that mitochondria used to be their own amoeba-like organism before being absorbed by a larger cell, forming a symbiotic relationship with it, going on to kick absolute evolutionary butt until almost every eukaryotic cell, from plants to animal to fungi to everything, have mitochondria in them now, because it was just so successful. And you know, I think that's a lesson for humanity. If you work hard and you work together, you can do amazing things and dominate the ecosystem. Anyway, thank you for listening to Modern Mimatics. I've been your host, Jamie Harvey. Come back for our next episode when we tackle another interesting science phrase that's made its way into society.